Most people think the Lord will return by descending with the clouds. Is our understanding correct or not? How could it possibly be wrong to wait in accordance with the Bible? You only hold the one where he descends with the clouds and don't investigate the other prophecies spoken by the Lord. If the Lord returns, and he works among mankind just as the Lord Jesus in the flesh had done, and we don't recognize him, then would we also judge and condemn him as the Pharisees had done, and so crucify him again? If I may introduce everyone, the Church of Almighty God's Brother Li, Brother Chen, and Sister Zhang. Here's our church's Elder Fu. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We welcome you to our church. Welcome to our Thanks church. Welcome to our church. Please welcome. sit. Thanks be to the Lord. We invited you here to help us study Almighty God's work in the last days. Praise, Praise God. God. We have long heard the Church of Almighty God has testified to the return of the Lord Jesus, who is Almighty God. Mm, yes. yes. He has begun his judgment work of the last days. Yes. But most people think the Lord will return by descending with the clouds. Mm. This is because the Lord Jesus clearly said, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Amen. The book of Revelation prophesied, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Amen. Amen. I too think he'll return by descending with the clouds to take us to the kingdom of heaven. We refuse to accept the Lord Jesus, who doesn't thus descend. That is why we've never investigated the Eastern Lightning. Yes. yes. You say his return is returning to flesh and descending in secret. But none know about this. But the Lord descending with the clouds is absolute. Amen. Amen. That's why we wait for the Lord to descend with the clouds and take us up directly to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Indeed. Is our understanding correct or not? Please speak to us on this. Yes, sure. Thanks be to God. How could we be wrong? Praise the Lord. Everyone, our view cannot be wrong. Yes, that's right. The Lord is faithful. I believe he will descend with the clouds to take us to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. The Bible also prophesies, he'll come as a thief, and someone will yell, the bridegroom comes at midnight. Of this, we cannot seek or investigate. That's right. That's right. False Christs will appear in the last days. We are afraid of being deceived. So I only believe in the Lord Jesus who descends with the clouds. This cannot be wrong. Amen. I will not accept unless the Lord descends with the clouds, taking believers to the kingdom of heaven. Yes, we cannot accept it. That's my view. Amen. Brother Jah's right. That's what I think, too. Amen. Amen. Everyone, when it comes to waiting for the Lord to descend with the clouds, we can't trust our notions. That's right. The Pharisees made a huge mistake in waiting for the Messiah's arrival. True. They used man's notions against the Lord Jesus who had already arrived. In the end, they nailed the Lord Jesus to the cross. Is this not a fact? Yeah. Is awaiting the Lord's arrival as simple as we think? If the Lord returns and he works among mankind just as the Lord Jesus in the flesh had done, and we don't recognize him, then would we also judge and condemn him 
as the Pharisees had done, and so crucify him again? Is this a possibility? <sighs> That's something we never thought of before. That's true. The Lord Jesus said many words about his return. But you only hold the one where he descends with the clouds and don't investigate the other prophecies spoken by the Lord. This makes it easy to walk down the wrong path and be abandoned by the Lord. The descend with the clouds prophecy is not the only one in the Bible. There's others, like he'll come as a thief and descend secretly. Yeah. As in Revelation 16.15. Revelation 16. Behold, I come as a thief. Matthew 25, 6. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go you out to meet him. And Revelation 3, 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. All these prophecies refer to God becoming flesh as the Son of Man and descending in secret. As a thief means coming quietly, secretly. Right. None will know he's God, even if they hear or see him. Just as it was when the Lord Jesus first appeared. The Lord Jesus looked like a son of man, and no one knew he is God. The Lord Jesus used as a thief analogously for the Son of Man's appearance. This is quite befitting. Those who do not love the truth, regardless of how God incarnate speaks or works, do not accept. Instead, they treat God incarnate as if he were a normal person and condemn and abandon him. That's why the Lord Jesus prophesied that when he returns, for as the lightning that lightens out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Amen. Amen. So his return shall be the coming of the Son of Man. As we know, Son of Man refers to God in the flesh, not the resurrected spiritual body of the Lord Jesus descending with the clouds to appear before all. Why is that the case? Let's think about it. If the spiritual body of the resurrected Lord Jesus descended, then the world would be shocked. All would drop right to the ground. Yes. None would resist. Many if so, sense. would the returned Lord Jesus still be rejected by this generation? Yes. Of his return, the Lord Jesus said, the coming of the Son of Man and as a thief. In reality, it's referring to God incarnated as the Son of Man arriving in secret. It's true. The Lord Jesus' words are clear. The returned Lord must first endure suffering and be rejected by this generation. Is this not God in the flesh? We've seen such scriptures before. Why haven't we been able to be enlightened? Their communication's been so enlightening. We must listen carefully. Yeah. How is the Son of Man descending in secret related to God openly appearing with the clouds? What is involved? Let's communicate about that. Okay. Thanks be okay. to the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the last days, God is incarnated and descends secretly to speak among men and begin the judgment from the house of God, purifying all who hear his voice and return before his throne and making them into a group of overcomers. Then God goes to Zion and brings the great disaster refining and chastising all those who don't accept God's judgment of the last days. Then God shall descend with the clouds to openly appear to all. 
the prophecy in Revelation 1-7 would then be fulfilled. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Amen. Everybody asks why. When the Lord descends with the clouds, those who pierce the Lord can still see him. Just who are the people who pierced him? <laughs> Do I need to say it? The ones who crucified the Lord Jesus in the first place. Yes. yes. Some would say, it's those who nailed the Lord Jesus to the cross. Is that really the case? Weren't those who crucified the Lord destroyed by God long ago? That's right. Yes, yes that's right. That is, yes, indeed, that is correct. indeed correct. Right. In reality, those who pierced him are those who, when God incarnate descends secretly in the last days, do not seek God's voice and condemn and resist Almighty God. That's right. At that time, they will see Almighty God that they have resisted and condemned is in fact the Savior Jesus they've been waiting for. They shall weep, beat their chest, and gnash their teeth. Their outcome can only be punishment. The book of Revelation does not say whether such people will live or die. So we cannot know. Only God knows. It's true. Up to this point, we all should be clear. Only the wise virgins who hear God's voice can welcome the Lord's return, be brought before God's throne to attend the marriage supper of the Lamb, and be perfected by God into an overcomer. This fulfills the prophecy in Revelation 14.4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Those who cling to the notion that the Lord will descend with the clouds but don't seek God's work in the last days are in fact foolish virgins. Oh, yes. In particular, those who resist and condemn Almighty God are the Pharisees and Antichrists exposed by God's work in the last days. They all have re-crucified God, mm. and they shall endure great disasters and be punished. The mistake. Those who only welcome the Lord that descends with the clouds have made. What type of people they are, and what their outcome will be. I trust we're now clear on. It's clearer now. Praise the Lord. What they have said is right. Key to receiving the Lord's return is listening to God's voice. Yeah. That's utterly correct. Yes. We have neglected this point. It's true. We really are foolish. Yes, it's it true. It seems we must look into the work of Almighty God in the last days. Yeah. Once the disasters come, it will be unimaginable. It's true. It's true. No one can know who will live or die. Yeah. I think that communication is quite good. We better hurry and look into it. If we still do not listen to God's voice, then we will fall into disaster. Indeed. We better listen carefully. <clears throat> you say the Lord will return secretly, in the flesh in the last days. Make a group of overcomers, and then descend with the clouds before all. This indeed makes sense. But for 2,000 years, most believers wait for the Lord to descend with the clouds. Yes. Amen. Our pastors and elders often say this. Yes. How could it possibly be wrong to wait in accordance with the Bible? That's right. That's right. How could this be wrong? Our pastors and elders are people who serve the Lord. Yes. yes. They wait for him to return thus. I don't believe the returned Lord would abandon all these pastors and elders. That's impossible. No way. Utterly impossible. How could that be possible? Yes, we must listen to the pastors and elders. Nothing wrong. Amen. They've believed longer and better grasped the Bible. That's, That's right. right. We have to listen to them. Amen. Amen. 
We should obey what the pastors and elders say as long as it is based on the Bible. That's right. Amen. Obeying them is obeying the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's enough to follow pastors and elders and wait for the Lord to descend with the clouds. The Lord is merciful. He would not abandon us and moreover would not punish us. Amen. He would not abandon us. What's your basis for saying something like that? Is what you have said in line with the words of the Lord Jesus? Are they based on God's words? If what you say is based on man's notions and imaginations, it would be resisting the Lord. Think of how the Pharisees waited for the arrival of the Messiah and why it was that they nailed the Lord Jesus to the cross. Initially, the Pharisees were replete with notions when it came to the Messiah. They saw the biblical prophecy. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder. But you, Bethlehem Ephratah, Though you be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall he come forth to me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Amen. Amen. Based on the words of the prophecies in the Bible and various long-held assumptions concerning the arrival of the Messiah, the Pharisees felt sure the Lord would be called Messiah and be born into wealth. And furthermore, like David, he would become the king of Israel and lead them to break free from the Roman government. Many Israelites probably thought this. Yes. yes. But God did not fulfill these prophecies according to their notions and imaginations. Therefore, the Pharisees made accusations and condemned the Lord Jesus. Although at the time, the Lord Jesus expressed many truths and performed many miracles, fully demonstrating God's authority and power. The Pharisees did not care how profound the Lord Jesus' words were, nor even how great was His authority. As long as it did not conform with their notions, as long as He was not born into a wealthy and noble family, as long as his name was not Messiah, they would condemn and resist. Yeah. yeah. Indeed, that's all true. Due to their truth-hating nature, they ultimately nailed the Lord Jesus who expressed truths and performed redemption work to the cross. That's all true. Brothers and sisters, are the Pharisees detestable? Too detestable. Yes. 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 Should they not be cursed? They should be cursed. Uh. The Pharisees' sins in condemning the Lord Jesus thoroughly exposed their truth-loathing, truth-hating satanic nature. Hmm. This clearly shows that their hearts were not genuinely looking forward to the Messiah saving them from sin. So instead looking forward to what? They were looking forward to the King of the Jews helping them break from Roman rule so they'd no longer have to suffer like slaves. They believed in God and awaited the Messiah's arrival to satisfy their own personal desires. Let's think about it. What mistake did the Pharisees make in waiting for the coming of the Messiah? Why is it that they were cursed and punished by God? This is really thought-provoking. Yes, we should think about it. Yes. Yeah. Why did the Pharisees resist and condemn the Lord Jesus when He appeared to perform His work? What nature of the Pharisees was demonstrated here? These are problems people who long for God's appearance should understand. This is indeed worthy of deep thought. If we can't see through these problems, then as for receiving the returned Lord Jesus, we might be on the same God-resisting path as the Pharisees. 
Do you not agree with this? Yes. Frightening. We must not walk the Pharisees' path. She's right. Yeah. How did the Pharisees wait for the Messiah to arrive? Why is it that they crucified the Lord Jesus? Just what is the source of these questions? Let's look at what was said by Almighty God. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Almighty God says, do you wish to know the root of why the Pharisees oppose Jesus? Do you wish to know the substance of the Pharisees? They were full of fantasies about the Messiah. What's more, they believed only that the Messiah would come, yet did not seek the truth of life. And so, even today they still await the Messiah. For they have no knowledge of the way of life and do not know what the way of truth is. How say you, could such foolish, stubborn, and ignorant people gain God's blessing? How could they behold the Messiah? They opposed Jesus because they did not know the direction of the Holy Spirit's work because they did not know the way of truth spoken by Jesus. And furthermore, because they did not understand the Messiah. And since they had never seen the Messiah and had never been in the company of the Messiah, they made the mistake of paying empty tribute to the name of the Messiah while opposing the substance of the Messiah by any means. These Pharisees, in substance, were stubborn, arrogant, and did not obey the truth. The principle of their belief in God is, no matter how profound your preaching, no matter how high your authority, you are not Christ, unless you are called the Messiah. Are these views not preposterous and ridiculous? Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank the Lord. Yes. Thank the Lord. Almighty God's words show the essence, source of the Pharisees' resistance of the Lord Jesus in waiting for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So in regard to receiving the Lord's return, if man relies on their notions, waiting for the Lord to descend with the clouds, rather than listening to God's voice, then won't they be walking the same God-resisting path of the Pharisees? Yeah. Then just what will their outcome be? They'll be cursed and punished, just like the Pharisees. You were right. It seems we're clear on this. What you have said is all true. Those Pharisees relied on their imaginations in longing for the Messiah. They condemned the Lord Jesus, and so they were cursed by God. We're also relying on our imaginations when it comes to receiving the returned Lord, thinking that when He returns in the last days, He'll descend with the clouds and take us to the kingdom of heaven. We even think if the Lord Jesus does not so descend, he must be fake. We blindly follow pastors and elders in condemning the Eastern Lightning. In this way, aren't we like the Pharisees, resisting and even condemning the Lord? That's right. It's terrifying, thinking of it now. Sister Wei, though what they say conforms, with the Bible. I maintain that the Lord will descend with the clouds. Amen. Amen. The Lord will descend with the clouds to take us to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. The Lord said those hmm. who wait for him shall not be ashamed. Yeah. It's true. I agree with Brother Ja. Amen. Brother Ja, we used to think the same. We believed 
the returned Lord would descend with the clouds to take us to the kingdom of heaven. From the look of things, it now seems we might be wrong. Yeah. yeah. What they've said, based on the Lord's prophecies in the Bible, is clear. The Lord Jesus will return in the last days secretly as the Son of Man. Perform judgment beginning from the house of God and create a group of overcomers before the disaster. Then he appears publicly descending with the clouds. I think this conforms with the Bible and the words of the Lord. Now the coming of the bridegroom's been testified. Have we looked into it? What is it then that we have been doing? We've been following religious leaders in condemning the Eastern Lightning. Is this right? Is this in line with the Lord's intentions? Even though we cannot be sure if Almighty God is the return of the Lord Jesus, we should at least seek and investigate. Yes, yes. we must investigate. Let's listen to Almighty God's word to see if it is the Lord's voice. Yeah. Otherwise, if we're not perfected into overcomers by the Lord who arrives in secret, we'll fall into the disaster and be punished. Then we would really lose. Oh, oh yes. Yes, you can't miss the chance. Would be Sister Fool is right. The suffering we've endured for believing in the Lord would be in vain. Yeah. Yes. Then we would be such foolish virgins. Yes. Wouldn't our faith come to nothing? We better ask the preachers from the Church of Almighty God to communicate with us more. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Uh, brothers, please try to communicate with us some more. Yes. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, now Almighty God's Kingdom Gospel has been spreading through China for more than 20 years. It spread to many denominations. That's right. During this period, Due to the CCP government's furious suppression, coupled with the CCP's propaganda, Almighty God is already a household name everyone knows. That's right. Mm. And now, all truths expressed by Almighty God and the films produced by the Church of Almighty God have been released online, spreading across the world. That's right. Completely beyond my expectations. I trust people in religious circles have all heard about the Church of Almighty God's testimony methods. Yes, we have indeed heard of them. Many people testified God has come, fulfilling the Lord Jesus' prophecy. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Then why do religious pastors and elders still furiously resist the work of Almighty God in the last days? There are many prophecies of the Lord's return in the Bible. So why are they fixated on the prophecy of the Lord descending with the clouds? Why don't they investigate when they hear testimonies of the Lord's coming? Yeah. Why when they know that Almighty God has expressed many truths and they've seen the reality of God's work, do they stubbornly hold to their notions and resist and condemn the work of God of the last days? These are good questions. Do these people love the truth and look forward in earnest to the Lord's arrival or not? Are they wise virgins or foolish virgins? If they're wise virgins and earnestly look forward to the Lord's return, then why would they hear God's voice and see how the kingdom gospel flourishes do they stubbornly condemn and resist? Could this be their sincerity in longing for and hoping for the Lord to appear? Could this be their true expression in rejoicing the return of the Lord? It could not. Let's be truly honest. Their longing for the return of the Lord Jesus is fake but their longing for the kingdom of heaven is real. Yes. Yeah. 
they believe in the Lord not to pursue the truth and gain life, not to gain the truth and cast off sin. What do they care about the most? It's when the Lord will descend to take them to the kingdom of heaven, and they'll escape suffering of the flesh and enjoy the kingdom of heaven. That's their true purpose of belief in God. Well said. Tell me, apart from this, what reason do they have to reject Almighty God who expresses truths to save mankind? Please think about it. If someone loves the truth and truly longs for God to appear, how will they act when they hear that the Lord has come? Would they not listen, look, nor seek? No. no. Would they blindly deny, condemn, and resist? They no. would not. No way. That's right. There's no way. People who long for God's appearance and welcome Him look forward to true light appearing, truth ruling within their heart. They look forward to God coming to help mankind escape sin, become holy, and be gained by God. Amen. Isn't that right, everyone? Yeah. yeah. That's, That's indeed right. That is indeed yes. right. I agree. But those who just wait for the Lord to descend with the clouds, yet deny Almighty God, especially those religious leaders who resist Almighty God to protect their status, these are all people who hate and despise the truth. They are all antichrists, unbelievers exposed by God's work of the last days. After God in the flesh completes his work of salvation, they will fall into the once in a million year disaster, weeping and gnashing teeth. Then the prophecy of the Lord publicly descending with the clouds will be completely fulfilled. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Amen. 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 We would not have known this had we not listened to them today. Their communication is enlightening. Everyone, let's take a look at the words of Almighty God. Okay. okay. Almighty God says, People who do not accept the truth, yet blindly await the arrival of Jesus upon white clouds, will surely blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. And they are the race that shall be destroyed. You merely wish for the grace of Jesus and merely want to enjoy the blissful realm of heaven. Yet you have never obeyed the words spoken by Jesus and have never received the truth expressed by Jesus when he returns to flesh. What will you hold up in exchange for the fact of Jesus' return upon a white cloud? Is it the sincerity in which you repeatedly commit sins and then confess them over and over? What will you offer in sacrifice to Jesus who returns upon a white cloud? Is it the years of work with which you exalt yourselves? What will you hold up to make the returned Jesus trust you? Is it that arrogant nature of yours which does not obey any truth? I tell you, those who believe in God because of the signs are surely the brood that shall suffer destruction. Those who are incapable of accepting the words of Jesus who has returned to flesh are surely the progeny of hell, the descendants of the archangel, 
the brood that shall be subjected to everlasting destruction. Many people may not care what I say, but I still want to tell every so-called saint who follows Jesus that when you see Jesus descend from the heaven upon a white cloud with your own eyes, this will be the public appearance of the Son of Righteousness. Perhaps that will be a time of great excitement for you. Yet you should know that the time when you witness Jesus descend from the heaven is also the time when you go down to hell to be punished. It will herald the end of God's management plan and will be when God rewards the good and punishes the wicked. For the judgment of God will have ended before man sees signs when there is only the expression of truth. Thanks be to the Lord. Those who accept the truth and do not seek signs and thus have been purified shall have returned before the throne of God and entered the Creator's embrace. Only those who persist in the belief that the Jesus who does not ride upon a white cloud is a false Christ shall be subjected to everlasting punishment. For they only believe in the Jesus who exhibits signs, but do not acknowledge the Jesus who proclaims severe judgment and releases the true way of life. And so, it can only be that Jesus deals with them when he openly returns upon a white cloud. They are too stubborn, too confident in themselves, too arrogant. How could such degenerates be rewarded by Jesus?